today, watchers. Welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today, I have what will hopefully be a relatively quick fire review of the latest piece from AV8 watches. AV8 um, have provided quite a few watches for the channel. I've kind of lost count how many I've done, uh, but the, the one of the ones I recall particularly was the Hawker Harrier 2 with that you know, rather cool turbine uh, rotor. So they do design some uh, pretty cool case specs uh, and some nice looking watches uh, now and then when they kind of hit uh, the sweet spots. Uh, today's watch comes in what is kind of the typical AV8 packaging that they provide these days, uh, this kind of green canvas. So guys, without further ado, let's flip the camera around and take a closer look at this guy. Okay, so here we have the box on the table and on the top you can see uh, AV8 there, kind of uh, this typical canvas on top of cardboard is what they come in these days with a button uh, security. Right, it kind of spins all right, you know, three and a half I reckon. And let's just get it open. So AV8 on the top, uh, canvas cushion there. And then the contents are simply a little bit of an, uh, you know, social media instruction, the spare links I've removed, microfiber cloth and a tag. Nothing too surprising there from uh, this brand of watches. And so here we have it on close up. This is the AV8 Flyboy Engineer Automatic. And uh, it does come in a couple of uh, different colorways. Uh, this one is the Sydney AV4075-33 is the model number. Uh, it does also come in a, a more black dial with white uh, markings and I think also a blue, uh, but you know, check out the website and links below if you're interested to look at the variations. Uh, the MSRP is going to be 285 USD, but with the typical 15% off codes that you can get, including, uh, you know, I'm pretty sure I have a code that I can share with down the bottom in the description. It, it comes under uh, 250. It's about 242 USD. So that, that's really the discussion price point for this particular watch. Okay, so First up, uh, let's, as I usually do, talk about the movement. So uh, as you may guess, I think if you take a wild guess, it is of course the Seiko NH35A. Uh, the, the stats down the left of screen there, you know, nothing uh, that you haven't seen or heard of before. Uh, so I'm not gonna go into the details. I'm just gonna say that the uh, date disc is black uh, with white writing implemented at the three o'clock position that you can see on the dial in picture. And then the accuracy rating you can see down the bottom left there in actual use this has been okay at plus eight seconds per day so fairly well regulated okay let's talk about the case now the case here is 42 millimeter diameter 316 steel uh, overall thickness is 13.2 uh, millimeters right so fairly decent but not too thick uh, the lug width uh, between the lugs here is 22 millimeters with a lug to lug distance that's fairly decent at 50 millimeter distance. Uh, overall weight on this watch here on the metal bracelet is 151 grams. So, you know, the kind of middling weight, not too heavy, uh, but certainly substantial uh, on the wrist here. Finishing wise, okay, so finishing uh, is completely brushed, okay, there's no uh, major polished surface here, almost completely brushed. So circular brushing on the uh, bezel there, longitudinal brushing on the top surface, uh, horizontal on the side surface, uh, and longitudinal brushing on the bottom surface of the lug set. Hopefully that translates uh, to the camera. Uh, it does have a minor polished surface, which is actually that top bevel there. Hopefully that translates in the camera, that top bevel between the top and side surface of the case there is polished. So, you know, a little bit of detail and, and differential finishing that they put into this. Um, the case back is circular brush, right? You've kind of seen that already. And it's got a nice uh, uh, stamp case back there with that Flyboy artwork, as well as, uh, you know, details regarding the specs of the watch that you can kind of read uh, on view on the camera here. So with that screw down case back, uh, it, it's you know pretty nicely sealed, but this is a push crown, right? It winds 
in the zero position, so it's not a screw down crown. The water rating that they've gone for is only 50 uh, meters, which is okay if ostensibly this is an aviation watch. It's not uh, you know, anything more than uh, that. It's not supposed to be an explorer watch and definitely not a dive watch. That's really what they've gone for. Um, now, that's the case. Let's talk about the dial now, which is probably where most of the interest of this watch is. So this is a textured, uh, green fume dial. Hopefully the texture comes in uh, on the macro shots that I can see here. It's got a rough, you know, almost sandpapery texture. Obviously a fume dial with the, the middle being brighter and then going uh, to very dark green on the periphery of this dial. It's got patina print details. So the, the brand, the flyboy, the I guess the 24 hour markers on the inner track there, that's all printed. But it's got kind of raised markers for the 0 to 11 as well as a raised chapter ring around the periphery here. So the numerals, I believe, uh, do look to be applied. The hands are, you know, what I'm going to call pilot style hands because I think it's mainly uh, inspired by the IWC Big Pilot. Uh, it's got a lollipop seconds with the, the lollipop being a style lines uh, roundel. Uh, it's got loom on the main hands as well as the indices uh, and the numerals. Okay, so the 0 to 11 as well as the indices on the chapter ring are loomed. The seconds hand does not have loom. Uh, and the loom is relatively poor. It really doesn't last very long. And I'll put the loom shot right here for you to see how it looks like when it's first charged up in the dark. Okay, so that's the description of the DAO. Uh, on top of it uh, is a domed sapphire crystal and it's fairly nicely domed I have to say you know you're getting a bit of distortion at extreme views but obviously it's double dome because you're not getting too much distortion at say about 45 degrees here and it's got anti-reflective coating treatment of course okay so that's the case let's talk about the bracelet now so the bracelet is uh, five piece per link stainless steel okay that's really what you're getting here longitudinal brush finish without any uh, polish finish here uh, it's got solid end links that you can see you know as i've shown you in the, the earlier shots uh, and it's got push pin adjust and all the av8 uh, watches just have push, push pin adjustment they don't really uh, have screw links any of them uh, you know 22 millimeter at the case but it tapers to 18 millimeters near the class and the class is pressed metal uh, you know push button release with three point micro adjustment and fairly solid arms um, and you know that's really the action there okay let's just put it on the wrist uh, for a wrist shot for you guys now and there we have it the av8 engineer flyboy automatic on my 17 centimeter wrist so remember it's fairly uh, substantial lug to lug distance of 50 millimeters but uh, the diameter is 42 uh, thickness uh, about 13 so that's how it looks like and there we go that's the bracelet on the wrist there okay so that's the description of the watch uh, what have I enjoyed about this well look I think it's solid value, right? Fairly solid value at $240 uh, with you know everything that this comes with. Stylishly presented, you know, offering, you know, it's got the Seiko NH35, which is you know very, very common, but absolutely reliable. It's got a pretty nicely done bracelet, I have to say, that's actually fairly nicely done. Uh, and the sapphire is pretty nice. I do enjoy dome sapphire crystals like this. Even nicer if it's boxed uh, sapphire, but you know that's not going to come cheap and probably difficult to find uh, in an AV8 of this price point. Uh, I think it's got a good composite dial, right? So this dial is obviously not a Flieger A or Flieger B. It's kind of a mix of uh, field style influences from uh, other other designs that you may have seen. You know, with the zero at the 12 o'clock position instead of a 12. You know, in a 24-hour track and all that. I think it's pretty nice mix. I, I, I quite like the mix that they've gone for here, and it certainly does. Uh, you know, afford near optimal legibility, which is what an aviator watch or a field watch is supposed to do. What are the weaknesses? Well, look, I think uh, not too much. There are some areas of uneven finishing. So the, the finishing, particularly on the end link, doesn't really match the, the case very well. The transition between brush and polish isn't exactly very sharp. So this isn't their best uh, casework, certainly not as good as a lot of spinnaker watches casework, I would say. There's a little bit of weaknesses here. 
Uh, it's got a large lug to lug distance, 50 millimeters is pretty substantial and possibly too big for a substantial amount of people. You know, a substantial number of people would find this a little bit uh, too large for their risk. And then I would say also the clasp closure. Uh, you know, I kind of compensated by pushing it, but you should push in easily, but this is actually quite difficult. So again, you really got to press it to get it to close, and that's really uh, a little bit of weakness, but I guess you're going to get to, you know, a bit of take and give with these uh, OEM clasps, right? Some of them are not going to be finished very well. Last thing I will say, um, you know, push crown, 50 meter water resistant, not fantastic, right? If they, you know, really just took an extra step, make it a screw in crown, make it a hundred meter water resistant, this would go a lot further. If they manage to keep that at the same price, I think this would you know, really be that much more successful if they kind of make it possibly a go anywhere, do anything watch. But as it is, this is what we're getting. All right, so guys, that's my thoughts on this AV8. Let's flip the camera around now for the wrap up. So there you go, guys, my review of the newest AV8, the Flyboy Engineer Automatic. Uh, I think it's a watch uh, that is not perfect by any means, you know, it's got its weaknesses, but it's also got, uh, you know, some strong points. I think the dial looks pretty nice, and I think they this time have hit a pretty competitive price point with the discount applied. It's under 250 so let me know what you think about this piece. I would love to hear your comments, particularly if you have experience with the company and if you own any of their pieces. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me, and as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.